Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I, I truly don't know what's going on, but it seems like I wind up often talking about stress and anxiety on the show, but it's a big thing. It's more and more, I like hear it from so many friends or the, they don't even know they're stressed out, but they're like running a mile a minute. And we've got somebody that can help you minimize that stress, especially if you're a woman and you're, because you, you deal with all different situations than, than guys do. Let's be honest. Dr. Melissa Odin is with us and she's with the Health Education Resources Network. She's the founder and CEO. Melissa, welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Yeah. Are you stressed out today? I'm trying not to be. <laughs> I actually am a little bit, I'll be honest, because it is Halloween. Love your shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and I just remembered, I didn't buy candy. So I have to buy that on oh. the way home. And, and I have, you know, security cameras set up and I've already had kids knocking at my door and I'm like, I should have left a bowl out there. Um, It's early. <laughs> I know. Like, <laughs> it's not even dark. They didn't even, I barely home from school and they're all already out there. So yeah, I got to get on that. My, minimal stress, but manageable. You know what? Right. No, actually I could have like DoorDash from CVS or. Uh... <laughs> and paid like three times more if you want right. to do it. Cause that's even more stressful, right? <laughs> There's an easier way. You have a course. We'll get with that. Yeah. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. So much stress going on these days and I've yet to figure out why. I don't know if it's a byproduct of, of the COVID situation, not necessarily COVID itself, where we were dealing with stuff indoors and, and now we're out of it, so to speak. But I, where do you think it is? Why is it here? Well, I think it's always been here. Uh, but I think what happened was the pandemic just highlighted the depths to which we have sunk <laughs> in terms of how stressful we have. Now, listen, part of that relates to and reflects our resiliency, right? I mean, the fact that we've been able to carry on the way we've been able to carry on reflects a very strong resiliency. So I don't want anybody to think that you know, anybody is weak because they're feeling stressed because that is absolutely not, not the case. However, um, because stress does affect the body so deeply uh, and in women's cases so fatally sometimes, it's really important, I think, that we stop and think about where is it coming from for you? Because where it's coming from for you and for anybody who's watching or listening to this uh, may be different than where it's coming from for me. So it's really important to kind of get in touch with um, that root cause uh, for you. And it's going to be different for everybody. So I'm sorry, I don't have a magic uh, solution for that. But, um, you know, there, there's going to be a course for that. So yeah, <laughs> there's going to be a course for that. <laughs> well, you do, you do have a number of things that you're working on to help women that are dealing with stress. And thank you for doing that. Because it's, I could rattle off name after name after name of busy moms just dealing with with life. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and God bless those parents who were home for two years trying to homeschool kids and work full time and do all of those things, because I, I can't think of a more stressful situation that most of the, you know, we went home for two weeks. Right. And everybody's like, whoo, pajama party for two weeks. And then the reality set in yeah. and people really had to start reflecting on what is this life I'm living what am I doing? Yeah. And, you know, and some changes obviously came to the surface for a lot of people because last March in 2021, we had the great resignation. Now we're having uh, the silent quitting. So there is a trend in this country towards trying to find that, that movement back to middle ground of balance so that we don't feel this chronic stress all the time. You did bring a, a, a very vivid memory of when COVID first kicked in and it was like, I'm on vacation. <laughs> home. This is great. Yeah. But wait a minute. I still have to work. Yeah. I still have to keep the kids happy. So it all kind of kicked in there. So yeah, I can see, you know, why that there was a lingering effect of that. And yeah. I know we talked about stress and women last time we got together, but where do yeah. we go from this point to help women out? I know that you have a digital course that you just launched, right? Yeah. So uh, it's the precursor to the signature digital course that's coming out at the end of no very, very end of November. Uh, and the, the the signature course is called Women in Stress Reclaiming Your Life. That is the that's the umbrella kind of title that I've got for all the work that I'm doing underneath that. Uh, that's coming out uh, later in November. And there's a webinar coming up Wednesday. We can talk about that in a second. But the precursor uh, course to that is called Lost in the Woods for Women. And this was actually developed very quickly this summer 
um, to for my email list. Actually, I I have a friend who actually is in London, England, and she told me we were collabing uh, this early this summer. She said, you know, you, this really needs to be the summer of love for your clients via your email list. And so I came up with this uh, course that actually came out of the original beta testing of the Women in Stress course, and it's called Lost in the Woods for Women. And and it's a metaphor, if you haven't gotten it by now, it's a metaphor for the stress that women feel uh, and for what happens to them mentally, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, when they get off that lighted path of their life and they find themselves lost in this dark woods of stress. And uh, so, yeah, that that course actually just rolled out Saturday morning, believe it or not. Uh, I, I got my my notice that it was live on my yeah. learning management system. So, um, yeah. So, so if you if you want to talk about some of this, I am ready to do. Yeah, that. Let's dig into that. <laughs> and I, okay. I want to rewind for just one second. Sure. When we when we talk about. You know, a woman lost in the woods, is that kind of a, you know, the, the, the metaphor for, I, I don't know, I don't know where to go from here. Like I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's stacked up to here. Yeah. I know that I can't stop because I got laundry to do, dropping to kick it off from here. Got to make dinner, da, 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 da. Is, is it that, that you're just, you're lost? Yeah, absolutely. And, and honestly, I am not a camper. Okay. Like my idea of Roughing it is a suite at the Embassy Suites, if that tells you anything. So okay. I had to really do my research on this because come to find out when you're lost in the woods, it's like pitch dark. You can't yeah. see one way or the other. And if you're not prepared for that, and if you don't have the supplies that you need to, to move forward or to get yourself out of that, it can be absolutely paralyzing and you can't get out to save your life, really. So that so that's where the whole metaphor comes from. So the entire course really is a metaphor for life and for this stress issue that women face. I, I got to share with you, and then we'll dig into it. But I have a friend, and she deals with you know some anxiety and some stress. So one day she popped by. I said, "Hey, I got like an hour and change. I go, let's go, let's go for a hike." She didn't know what a hike meant. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so I go to a park that was literally five minutes away. It's a mile. It's not more than that. And right. she's in the middle of it. And she started getting a little anxious in a fun way. But she's like, I, I would be lost in here. I wouldn't even know how to get my way. I'm like, you can hear the cars <laughs> driving by on the highway. It, it's right over there. But there it is. I mean, there's, yeah. you know, when you're in that moment, you don't know how to get out. You don't know how to deal with it. So let's let's dig into the the, the digital course. What All is right. The so, can... yeah. So there are five core lessons. And then there's an introductory video and then a bonus video. So there's a total of seven videos in this course. Um, and so you get, there's five core lessons and then five worksheets that go with them. And so the first lesson we talk really about how to identify the fact that you are lost in the woods, you know, let's just stop and say, Hey, I am lost. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And the first thing we talk about is don't panic, mm -hmm. right? That's, I mean, if you look at any, anything that anybody will tell you about how to get out of a real woods situation, lost situation is don't panic. Because when you panic, it's really when you, it's like you can't hear the cars or you can't hear that babbling brook that you passed. And, you know, maybe it's now to your left and you knew that the road was right on the other side of that, right? Yep. So the whole idea is not to panic. But also in that lesson, we talk about um, getting grounded in the STOP method, S-T-O-P. And that means to sit, think, observe and plan. And so I walk people through what that looks like and why that's really important. Uh, to be able to mm. do that, uh, to to be able to walk with a plan, right? And not because typically uh, people who try to walk out of a situation they're not aware of walk in circles. How's that helpful? <laughs> I mean, we can all think of times in our lives where we have walked in circles, either physically or emotionally and mentally, right? So, so we talk about that a lot. And the fact that you do have to do the hard work to get out. And I'm, I think we talked about this last time. I make no bones about that. This is not easy. It is not easy, but people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired typically have what we call a healthy level of disgust and they're ready to do the work. So that's part of it. Um, second, the second lesson we talk about finding water immediately. And if you are a camper out there, let me just tell you, this is probably familiar to you, but you probably never thought about it in the, in the metaphorical sense, right? So what does water mean? We can live without food for many days, right? But it's very, very difficult to live without water for more than about three or four days because your body is 85 to 90 percent water right so you need that to sustain life and so we talk about uh what that water is in your life where do you get it how do you replenish it you know all of those things not to mention the fact that you should be hydrating anyway <laughs> just saying yes yeah. and and by the way to be able to hydrate you have to be prepared 
So again, mm -hmm. metaphorically speaking, how prepared are you for the hard times in your life, right? How prepared are you? Water is heavy. It, I mean, it's heavy. So yeah. are, how much water are you carrying with you? Um, and how much are you, you know, leaving behind because you just think it's too heavy uh, and you, you know, you're willing to take a risk, right? right. So we talk about what that water looks like in your life. Um, and then the, the third lesson, we talk about starting a fire. And, you know, fire, again, fire will keep you warm, but fire can also burn you up. And so we go through a very, very cool poem uh, that I, it's, I think this poem is so much better to go through with people in person, but I did the best that I could, <laughs> you know, via video to walk people through this and to really give them an, an idea of what's the fire in your life and do you need to douse some of it or do you need to stoke it? And so we kind of talk about those two different things and what that, mm -hmm. what that looks like. So um, the, the fourth part of it is building a shelter. And we talk about, again, being prepared. You know, what are you carrying with you? You know, you need a tarp, right? If you're really lost in the woods, you need a tarp and some way to secure that. Um, and, and the shelter in this particular metaphorical sense is what we call social capital. Social capital are the people in your lives that can get you out of a situation that you can't get yourself out of. And, you know, you we're not created to do life alone. We're created to live in community. So who are the people in your life that can help you with that when you need it? And then finally, we talk about creating a signal. I think for me, this was the best lesson for me to, to write and film because I talk about the bat signal <laughs> and what the bat signal, and I learned a lot about the bat signal actually, and what it really means. And I will not reveal that here because clearly I would like people to take this course, but let me just tell you that the bat signal um, is, was created not only as a, as a help, I, you know, we need help in Gotham, um, but it was also created as a signal for hope. Um, to give the people in Gotham some hope. I hope you guys will get this lesson because it was it was absolutely hands down my favorite. As women, we are so bad about asking for help. We think we can do it all. And that's where we get in trouble is that we don't ask for help when we need it. And so that's what creating a signal is all about is being able to ask for help. So those are the five core lessons uh, in that particular in that particular series. And then there's a bonus one that you get. It's really fun too. Uh, and we just kind of talk about wrapping everything up and uh, where you go from here. And that would be to the signature course, which is the women in stress course. So let's go back to that, Melissa. By the way, we're talking with Dr. Melissa Odin, your website, super simple, right? Yeah. Dr. Melissa Odin.com. O-D-E-N. O-D-E-N. Mm -hmm. Why are women afraid to ask for help? Is it a, a, a cultural thing, a society mm -hmm. thing? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, women are the caregivers, right? And so somehow we got this message that if we don't handle everything and handle it properly the first time, that uh, somehow we're less of a woman or somehow we're not capable. And the fact of the matter is, is that you just can't handle We're We're not created to handle all of it. Um, and I think that's why people who are not in community regularly, whatever that means to them, I think that's why people struggle. Granted, there are some folks who are introverts, uh, you know, who think that they're just fine the way that they are. And, mo and most of the time they are, but even introverts need community. In fact, during the pandemic, I have several introverted friends who uh, would tell me quite often, I'm done with this. Like I need some people. <laughs> so yeah. 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 So it's, uh, yeah, I'm tired of looking at these four walls and I really need to have a conversation with someone other than my cat. <laughs> and I can relate to that because I have one. Uh, and so he's not much of a conversationalist, but <laughs> so that, but yeah, they were telling me that, that we're just done. We, we just, we're done with this. Uh, so it's really, really important for people to remember that you need to ask for help because you're not, you're not equipped with everything that you need to be able to handle all of life situations. There is always someone who's got something that you need and vice versa, by the way, it's not a lose, lose. It's not a win, lose situation. It should be a win, win. What do we have to share with each other that can help all of us to be able to get out of that situation? How about for, there's a lot of single moms, especially I'm hearing in their forties and fifties and dealing with their kids and not leaving the time for themselves. I could rattle off name after name of, of women that I know in that situation where they, they, they feel like they have to do this and do that and do this for their kids. And there's no time left for them. Yeah, that that's difficult. And, and in full disclosure, I'm not a mom, nor am I a single mom. 
So I, I can only imagine in my head what these ladies are, are going through and dealing with. Although I do have several friends who are single moms and I have watched them over the years uh, try to do this. And I'll, I'll tell you the ones who've been the most successful are the ones who are in community and the ones who can say, hey, can you watch my kids for a couple of hours and just let me go to mm. a coffee shop and just sit and read a book? Or I'm going to, I'm going to, get in my bathtub for a couple of hours, you know, and just take a bubble bath. Can you watch my kids for a little bit? So again, it's that social capital. Who do we have in our lives that we can depend on who can help us with those situations? And those, those single moms out there that don't have that, I think they're the ones who struggle the most because they don't really have anybody to call and say, can you help me? Um, even if it's just an after school program that they can put them in for a couple of hours. Um, I, in my early days, I used to work one of those after school programs and most of them were free. And so if you can take advantage of things like that, uh, if your local YMCA or whatever community center you have around you has an after school program or something like that, man, take a couple of hours and utilize that because that's where you can kind of find some time for you and just a couple of suggestions. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And you know what? Just say no, it's okay. Yeah. I, have, I have one friend and she dealt with this the other day and I, I think it was her daughter's basketball team or something like that. They were doing a charity thing and they needed some help with the uh, charity fundraising baskets. They were putting them all together. And she said, I don't have time. I don't. And here's $20 <laughs> and everybody's cool with it because there are some people who love doing it. So let them do that. And then you'll do what you want to do or you feel good about doing or something that excites you. And for those situations, you you contribute it and you're good. She just yeah. Said, yeah. And and I'll guarantee you that every school in the nation has a group of these single moms that are trying to and honestly, single dads, too. Right. There's a lot more single dads than there used to be 20, 30 years ago. Right. Mm. But. You know, if it were me and and maybe because I'm an extrovert and I would just do something like this, man, I'd be up at that school going, who do I need to reach out to that maybe in the same situation that we could that we could form a group or a collaboration or something that we could start working together and saying, look, you know, how can how can we make this work better? And it, that might be a great place to start is in your local schools. Um, you know, if you're not a church goer, that might be a great place to do that. If you're a church goer, clearly your church family would be a great place to start uh, or synagogue or, or wherever uh, you worship. So there are a lot of different options for folks to be able to do that. Uh, but that might be something really, really fun to do outside of the PTA, <laughs> right? <laughs> if there's just a, a small group of single moms right. or dads that, uh, that really need some assistance, there are, uh, and there are social workers in schools, by the way, uh, who would be willing to help with that if they just knew that that was, you know, something that needed to be addressed. Totally. You know what, b before we get back to the, the digital course, you have something coming up this week. Is it mm -hmm. on Facebook, I'm trying to remember. Um, actually, it's on Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that we're going to go Zoom to Facebook Live. Uh, th they change the technology all the time, and so I never really depend on that. Uh, it's always much better to do it in Zoom and record it and put it up later. Mm -hmm. um, but that's probably what will happen. So I have a Zoom link uh, that I will share with you. Uh, it's an informational webinar about the upcoming signature digital course that will be rolling out late November called Women in Stress, Reclaiming Your Life. And basically, I'm just going to be going very quickly, 30 minutes over what the course is, how much it is, how you can get involved in that, and that type of thing. So that's coming up this Wednesday night, November the 2nd. And the course that we're we're talking about, the digital course, that's coming out at the end of, end November? of November. Mm -hmm. end of, okay. Yeah. Got it. What do you want women to know? Like the most important thing right here, you're dealing with stress. What should they know? Perspective, right? Perspective. Take a step back and just evaluate everything and go, okay, is this really what I'm seeing? Do I see what I think I'm seeing in my life? Hmm. If yes, then find the courage to make those changes right? That's really what it comes down to is finding the courage to make those changes because a lot of people around you are going to get real upset when you start changing your life. You can't listen, right? If, if you want to live past whatever age you want to live past and not let this stress situation get you, um, then you, then you really just need to find the courage to make the changes. And that's what having a coach will help you do, right? If you can't figure that out, then you need to reach out to somebody and ask them to help you do that because there are plenty of us who've had to do that same thing. Um, but the other thing is if, if, if you need help, ask for it, Yes. ask for it. There is no shame in that. No one is going to look crossways at you for asking help. And I, and 
please, women across the nation, help me get this message out. <laughs> we, we, it's okay to ask for help. There's, there's nothing shameful about that whatsoever. Um, and that's the one thing you can do to help me <laughs> get this message out to women all across the nation and change the culture because that's what we're really going to have to start doing uh, is, is working more deeply at the cultural level to change some of these things and to change the perception about what women can and can't do. I'm not saying that, you know, just make the, just, I'm not saying we can't do everything we set our mind to. What I'm saying is when you need help, ask for it, ask for it, please. <laughs> just like when you don't have the answer and you're in a meeting at work, you know, let me double check on that for you. And mm -hmm. I'll get back. Nobody's going to judge you and say, oh, look at that. They don't know the answer. Right. I respect you for saying, let me get clarity. And I'll be back on that. Right. That's it. And, and there's nothing wrong with that in the business world. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that in your personal life. Sure. Absolutely nothing. So there are people out there who want to help you. So whether that's a counselor, social worker, life coach, whoever that is, ask for help. 100%. And ask yourself. Like sometimes you just, you have to make a decision in life, whether it's with your kids or whatever it is. I always do that. Go with your gut. I know it sounds cheesy, but you know what? You know. You know what the answer is, but you got to listen and you got to tune yourself to listen. Absolutely. And as Les Brown would say, uh, the great Les Brown would say, if you don't act on life, life will act on you. And I'm telling you that has been true in my life a million times over. Okay. I will have, I will delay making a decision and I will delay so long that the consequence of that is worse than I, if I had just made the decision. Right. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's another thing you have to think about is just, you know what you need to do in your gut. Just find the courage to make that decision and move forward. You'll be so glad you did. And listen and learn to listen to yourself. Cause unless you're tuned into yourself and let's face it, if you're all stressed out and I call it the noise, everything around you is the noise, you know, your kids need something, boss, spouse, whatever, you're not going to hear from within and get that answer. And to your point, Melissa, I, I can't tell you how many times there was an opportunity in front of me, but I was like, you know, I guess by the time I acted on it, it was over or it changed, not for the better. And if I just went, yeah, go, okay, let me make that phone. Let me call you right back. Yeah. That's a lose. Like my mom always said, you can always say no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and people are so afraid of making mistakes. What I would say yeah. to that is, is that you, you are missing out on some of the best parts of life and you're missing out on a lot of serendipity when you live in that space. A lot of times, you know, life, life will always correct you. You really can't make a wrong decision, right? Because whatever decision you make, life is always out there going, okay, wait, come back over here. And it's going to correct you back to where you need to go. So, you know, I just don't be afraid of making a wrong decision because it's just not really possible <laughs> to do, yeah. uh, you know, it's just not. So just make a decision. That's all you really need to do is just make a decision. By making a decision, you made the right decision because right or wrong, you're still going to get something out of it. Maybe a lesson. You never know what it's going to be. So just make that decision. Yeah. yeah love it. Absolutely. All right. So women in stress, you got the link. We're going to on, on the video, we're going to put them down there and on your website, maybe coming up sometime soon. Yeah. So if anybody wants to know immediately about this, please go to my website, drmelissaoden.com. You're going to get a pop-up box and you're, you can put your name and email in there. Uh, you will also get my freebie that's on there that you can download. It's the Women in Stress Journal, which is beautifully done my, by my virtual assistant. It's gorgeous. Um, but you will get on the email list immediately and you will get your first email on Wednesday morning and the link will be in that email. So if you miss all of this, if you're driving, please be safe. <laughs> but you, you, but just jump on, the best way is just jump on the email list and you can find out everything that's going on at drmelissaoden.com. Love it. Love our talk today. Spread the yeah. word, people. Women in stress. Somebody is here to help you out. It's Halloween. What's your favorite kind of candy? Uh, anything chocolate. Uh, right now, it's Three Musketeers. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's from my childhood. We used to always have that to give out. And I, I'm pretty sure I probably ate more than we gave out. Oh, yeah. But it's just a throwback to my childhood. I like those little bitty Three Musketeers. Oh, yeah. The, the, uh, <laughs> uh, well, they have the Hershey miniatures. They never, that never gets old. You know, no. the, the dark chocolate, the Hershey bar, the, uh, I think it's good bar I'm trying to remember. Or yeah. Oh, Mr. Good bar. Oh, I used to love Mr. Good bar. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely mm. delicious. But right. I'll take it three musketeers anytime. <laughs> Final question. Cause I, I'm on a, a personal survey today. White chocolate. Yay or nay? No. White chocolate is not chocolate. <laughs> Thank There's no cacao that. in it. It's not chocolate. I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> if you want to defriend us, if you just want to tune out at this point, if you like white chocolate, 
It's plastic. You're eating what it's, tastes like plastic. It's not chocolate. Sorry, guys. It's, it's not. not <laughs> the only place for it, I'm just going to say this, is if you drizzle it over like a pretzel or something like that, all right, maybe. You know, okay. Whatever. This, you know, eh. I don't want to discourage white chocolate. I don't want to like kick it out to the curb, but you know, it's it's not like true chocolate. Yeah. That's all right. right. Here you go. All right. <laughs> Melissa, always a pleasure. Go to the website, Dr. Melissa Odin, O D E N dot com, and look forward to talking to you next time. All right. Thank you so much. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. 